Welcome to our Thursday Daily Devotional. And we're doing something slightly different today because today is Ascension Day, when we remember Christ ascending into heaven following the 40 days of his resurrection appearances. And so I'm going to begin by reading from Acts chapter 1. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days he will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the dates or times the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. There's a place in Pembrokeshire that I love to visit. It's called St Govan's Chapel and it's near to Stack Rocks or Elegug Stack as they call it in Welsh. It's a tiny little chapel nestled halfway down a cliff leading to a rugged stretch of rocks and tumbled boulders that take you down to the sea. As you approach it from ground level you can see nothing. You look as if you're driving to the edge of the cliff and you park your car and then suddenly you see the stairs cut into the side of the cliff leading down to the tiny little ancient grey stone chapel. But what I want to imagine is that you are a sea snail. Bear with me. Imagine a sea snail creeping out of the sea into a rock pool. It's a curious sea snail and it clambers and slithers over many rocks, getting higher and higher. Finally, it comes to some steps leading up to the doorway of the little grey chapel. The sea snail is curious and continues on its slithering journey, far away now from the sea, which is many, many feet below. But it continues on up for it wants to know what is higher. And so it goes up those stone steps, nearly 100 of them until finally it reaches ground level. Ah, thinks the sea snail, the view is very different from up here to how it was down in my little rock pool. It's not a great analogy, but I think what Christ does for us in our lives is take her, takes us on the journey of discipleship, pulling us out from the sea onto a journey where we slither and slide slipping back from time to time, but following in his footsteps, growing higher and higher, until we reach that point of ground level where we say, ah, oh, things look different from up here. Of course, if we reverse the analogy, we can think of the incarnation, of Jesus coming down, down the steps, down past the chapel, down over the rocks, all the way down to our level, the level of the rock pool all the way down where he laid aside all the power and glory of heaven and came down into our world to meet with us and to show us the way. In fact, we could push the, the analogy even further, probably beyond its limits, and say that when he descended to the dead, it was as if he plumbed the depths of the ocean in order to rescue and bring us back. 
And so he shows us the way to God, not through our own efforts, but by going before us and by saying, this is the way, follow me. I would say this is the way, walk in it. But clearly, if we're a snail, we can't walk. But what I think the ascension shows us is that actually Jesus is much less like a sea snail than he is like a red kite. When we first moved to Marlow Bottom, we were so struck by the common sight of these amazing birds of prey soaring up into the sky, able to see so much further than we can with that clear, clear sight as they look beyond the farthest horizon. And what the ascension shows us is Jesus says, you think you've gone on a journey with me, but you wait because there is so much more. You wait because you will soar up with me on wings like a red kite, like an eagle. And you will come to that point where you can share in the glory of looking at all across, where you will see things so differently. You will leave behind your little sea snail existence, no more than just coming up to ground level, but actually going way, way beyond. And I believe that the ascension just points us in that direction. Obviously, it was not the end of the story for the disciples. They waited in Jerusalem 10 days till the coming of that promised Holy Spirit. They waited perplexed, convinced, but not sure what to do. And the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost, of course, transformed and changed everything, perhaps enabled them and enables us to get glimpses of those distant views from the red kite. But what we hold on to today is that Christ has come down to our level, has descended even lower than we have gone and brings us back up and shows us that there is more still to come. What a message to cling on to as we go through this extraordinary and difficult and challenging time that the ascension gives us that hope of a new horizon.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. <laughs>